Assalamu alaikum. This presentation is on the east-west advancement flaps and head and neck reconstruction. I aim to go through the rationale, the design, the dimensions, and its applications. While considering the options for closing up a surgical defect like this, particularly in an exposed area like the face, the primary aims are to have a minimal amount of tension in the wound and to avoid having trapdoor or dog ear deformities and to have a neat scar at the end that lies parallel to relaxed skin tension lines. And traditionally having um, an elliptical or a fusiform shaped defect or transforming a circular or a square defect into an elliptical or a fusiform shape helped with all these aims. Uh, the elliptic form the defect would have a 30 degrees angle at the apex and have a length to breadth of 3 to 1. This is to demonstrate how the east and west flaps uh, developed. Starting with a circular defect, you would consider transforming this circular defect into an elliptical form defect by removing extra tissues on both sides of the circular hole. If you don't do this, there will be too much tension in the middle and two uh, dog ears deformities at the periphery. If you excise one of the triangular defects on one side, you can minimize the tension a little bit but you still have dog ear deformity on the other. The idea behind the east and west flap is that you don't necessarily have to remove that triangular skin directly opposing the original uh, excision. You can have that triangular skin excised from anywhere along a line extending from the base of the defect, either upwards or downwards. And if that's achieved, you can have a wound that closes with minimal tension and no dog ear deformity. You just have to draw a line along the base of the defect and have the extra uh, triangle anywhere along this line. So that's the idea behind the east-west flaps. You would need to excise two triangular pieces of skin. The primary triangle contains the original lesion inside. The secondary triangle should be of similar dimensions, but not necessarily identical, and has its base anywhere along a line extending from the base of the primary triangle. And if you have your design right, with 30 degrees angle at the apex of these triangles, and triangles are isosceles with equal lengths to the two arms of it, then you can have, if you have the base of the first triangle like an X, you can have the base of the second triangle just less than an X, as small as half an X sometimes if the skin can be stretched enough. Now the two triangles are designed and they share the same base in here and you can start incising the skin and once the triangles are removed with the lesion and the primary triangle you can advance the skin with no much tension and you end up with primary closure of these uh, wounds you can see now the bases of the two triangles are opposing each other uh, nicely. The design of the east-west flaps would start with this. You would need to consider where do you want the ultimate scar to lie. The ultimate scar is formed of three lines. The first line is the closure of the primary triangle that contains the, the lesion at its base. The second line is formed of the line drawn along the base of the primary triangle and the third line is the closure of the uh, secondary triangle. Now you can draw several 
triangles around a circular defect like this along its 360 degrees. In this example, it's pointing towards the 12 o'clock position. That's where you would have the first line of the scar. And this will dictate the direction of the second triangle, of second line and the third line as well. Obviously, you want these three lines to lie as close as possible to relax skin tension lines, preferably between uh, cosmetic subunits on either side of this line. But also tissue availability on one side of the defect would dictate the direction of the uh, mobilization of the advancement flap. The other good indication for the use of east-west flaps is if you have multiple skin lesions in the same area. Like if you have two small lesions here in the forehead, you can do, draw the two triangles uh, to resect these two lesions, but the triangles should be uh, pointing to different directions like east and west. Once the uh, triangular pieces of skin are excised, the final outcome would be the scar with the three lines on it, and you have these lines uh, passing through or very close to relaxed skin tension lines. So if you have two smaller lesions in here, you can draw the line in between them to form the basis of the two triangles. The two triangles are then drawn, isosceles triangles with 30 degrees at the apex. As you can see, these two triangles are fairly similar but not identical. And once the lesions are excised, you can mobilize now the skin by advancement and opposite directions, and you end up with a three lines scar. A common area for the use of the east-west flaps is the nasal tip and supra tip areas for lesions measuring less than 1.5 centimeters in diameter. If you have a, a paramedian lesion, small lesion like this, you can draw the primary triangle pointing superiorly, extend the line along its base and have the secondary triangular pointing inferiorly exactly in the midline where you can hide the scar easier. Once the um, triangle are excised, the skin flaps can be mobilized, as you can see in the picture here, and you end up with a fairly hidden scar. For the same lesion, you can have another uh, design with a primary triangle pointing superiorly but obliquely, extend the base outside the nose and have the secondary triangle outside the nose where you can have the scar hidden in the alar crease. Another common side for the use of the east and west flap would be the nasal side wall defects. You can draw the primary triangle to lie at the um, edge of the side wall of the nose and the secondary triangle around the nasolabial fold. And once you have the two triangles excised, you would expect the scar tissue to be hidden in the side wall of the nose and the nasolabial fold. The east and west flap can also be used in the eyelids the upper lip and the external ear or the cheek. Of course, it has excellent blood supply because of a very wide base and it helps in minimizing the tension of the wound and also have no trapdoor or uh, dog ear deformity. By this, we come to the end of this presentation on the east and west flaps. Salaam alaikum.